G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru and today we're covering a workflow that a user brought to me which is how to deal with tracking elements in linked rooms using Dynamo. So most of you probably know how to track elements in rooms, there's some nodes that come out of the box for that but linked it's a bit different. So I'd like to thank um, Xiaomi for working through this workflow with me by email. Uh, he came to me with a problem and we sort of traded some scripting ideas back and forth until we got something that worked. So. Elements don't typically report the link that they're based in uh, if the room is linked. Um, you can see in the schedule here, I've generated the furniture schedule and everything within the model is reporting to the room, but everything outside uh, from a linked model is the opposite. So what we're gonna do is go in the model where the furniture is and then read the data from the linked room based on an intersection between them. So we're gonna get the elements location, um, get the room, get its geometry, and then clash the location against the geometry. Then we'll get the room parameters and set them to the element to let it know which room it belongs to. We're gonna be using two custom nodes today. One is from Bimorph nodes, which is gonna allow us to get linked rooms. And the other one is from Clockwork, which will allow us to assess the centroid of the bounding box of an element. And we're using Dynamo 2.3 today in Revit 2020. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into it. So I'm just gonna be using the sample model that Xiaomi gave me, um, which is essentially just a derivation on the Autodesk Advanced Architectural Sample Project um, with everything stripped out of it. And then he's linked in the Architectural uh, Sample Project back in. And he's just placed a few pieces of furniture around the model. So we're gonna be searching for furniture specifically. Um, you can see there's a whole bunch of them just sitting in different rooms. Some of them are in the same room, so we can do multiple pieces in the same room at the same time. But what we'll do is just jump straight into Dynamo and get started. So I'm just going to maximize Dynamo so we can see what we're dealing with. we will go into manual mode. So what we're going to do first is we're going to get the link. So we're going to get a select model elements node. Um, you can select links using lots of different custom nodes as well. Sometimes just the select model element is good enough. So in this case, I'm just going to select. I'm going to select my link. So that should give us uh, Revit link instance in this case. Cool. And then we're going to get a category by name because we want to get all the rooms. So we're going to get a category by name and then a string rooms. So pretty, pretty easy start so far. What we're going to do now is do the link element of category from Bimorph nodes. And of this link instance, we're going to get all the link elements of that category. And we'll just run this. And what we should get is a list of all the linked rooms in Revit, but they're being read as a link instance. But you can sort of treat them just like an ordinary element in Revit and Dynamo from this point. So we could do like an element geometry node, and we could get the rooms geometry, which in this case we are going to do. So we'll just run this, and then we'll do a zoom fit. Obviously this would be quite slow on a model with lots of rooms. Um, so it's up to you if you want to find a different workflow to deal with it that doesn't rely on the room's geometry. Um, I tried a lot of different custom nodes and couldn't really find one that did the job very quickly or faster than this workflow did. Um, even though there are some different nodes that try to do this without using the geometry. I'm going to flatten my list after that because every single one of these is a sub list. So I'll just turn off the preview for that. Run, get my flattened list of rooms. Sorry, I won't freeze it. And I'll, I'll keep the preview on for now. What we're going to do now is get all of our furniture. So we're just going to borrow this category by name. Just copy it up here. And we're going to get all our furniture. And this could be like cable trays, electrical fixtures. You could get all instances of a family type. It's up to you what you look for at this point of the script. We're just going to get eight elements of category. So all elements of category. And this will give us all of our furniture instances in our model that aren't linked. And then we're gonna get their bounding box. So we're just gonna do a bounding box, but we're gonna do it that whether it contains a given piece of geometry. So this will give us a bounding box for each piece of furniture. Uh, interesting. Oh, geometry bounding box, I need to do element bounding box. I found the search functions a little bit awkward in Dynamo sometimes. Doesn't quite give you what you're looking for. 
So we've got a bounding box for every single one of these now. We can't see it. But what we're going to do now is just call on the bounding box properties node from Clockwork. Should be in here somewhere. We'll just search for properties. There we go, bounding box properties. See what I mean? I couldn't really find what I was looking for until I wrote it in a particular order. Very awkward. Um, but essentially this should give us a centroid for every single piece of furniture. So if I turn off my rooms, we've got the center of the overall extent of the geometry of each element. Um, so this may not work for some elements like structural beams that go through multiple rooms, but for elements that are sitting entirely within a room, uh, the centroid would typically be sitting in the room as well. So it works in this case. You might have difficulty with elements sitting on walls as well. Um, you may want to find a way to deal with their reporting points instead or you might want to expand the size of the room by a few hundred mil to pick up those extra elements. Anyway, we're going to keep going forward with this one. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have to do a does intersect check to see which rooms these centroids intersect with. But we're going to have to apply it on a list mapping basis because we're going to do it for each point. We're going to generate a list of whether it intersects with each room. So we're going to do a list map. So we're going to take all these centroids. We'll just turn off the preview. And we're going to say for each piece of geometry, we're going to take each centroid and do a clash. So what we should expect to see is basically a sublist for each each point for each room. So what we can do now is find the first index of true, because this will be the index of the room that it clashes with. So we can do index of, and you may need to put uh, like a catch all into your script at this point to pick up the, the rooms that don't, uh, the, the elements that don't have a room on them. Um, you might want to filter out if their index equals negative one then get rid of them and also get rid of the rooms as well. But in this case, we're just gonna, we're gonna work with the fact that all the elements are inside rooms. And we're gonna get the first index of true. We're gonna get it at level two though. So for each sublist, we wanna find that first index. So we're gonna work at level two of the list. And now we can see the index that each of these pieces of furniture belongs to in the room list. So what we're gonna have to do is collect our rooms. So I'll just move all this stuff up. And then we're gonna do a get item at index. And we're gonna take our list of rooms or linked rooms. And then we're gonna find the room at that index. And there you go, that's the linked rooms that occur at those centroids. From here, it's a pretty straightforward workflow. It's really just a get set um, for parameters. So we'll just do a element get parameter value by name. And we're gonna get two of these. And we're gonna call on two parameters. So I'm just gonna make a code block and I'm gonna look for the name and the number of those rooms. So parameter name, parameter name, element, element. So the top one's gonna to be the names of those rooms and the bottom is gonna be the number. And you can see we can get the parameters out of linked elements just like we can with standard elements through the biomorph node. What we wanna do then is just get some set parameter nodes. So we're gonna do two sets in this case. And because we clashed our elements against our rooms, they're gonna occur back here in the same order. So we can just put, push this up and we can reach across and connect those up like this. What we need to do now is find two parameters that exist in the furniture families. So in the case of this model, um, Xiao had already set up two parameters called FFNE room name and FFNE room number. I believe that they'll be project parameters. Oh, they're shared parameters. Okay, so that they were shared parameters set up by Xiao, but we can call on them by name. So we'll just jump back in here. And I think it's FF and E room name and number. I'll just double check I've got the caps correct. Yep, that's correct. And essentially we just want to set these two parameters to the correlating room. So we'll get parameter, parameter names and we'll get our values. And we'll run. And we should have just set the two parameters for those elements. And there you go, now you can see that these elements have a parameter that tells them which room they belong to. So even though we have a schedule where we can't see the rooms they belong to, we can 
achieve a schedule where there are fields that are available. So that's one way you could deal with getting data out of linked rooms to elements um, between models. Say if you're like an interior designer and you need to put a parameter in your furniture that says which room does this piece of furniture belong to for a reporting schedule. Likewise, it could be for cable trays, it could be for electrical fixtures. There's lots of uses for this anywhere where the room is a linked element. So hopefully that helps and thanks to Xiao for sort of sharing this workflow with me. So this script will be available on the GitHub by the time this is released. Uh, so you're welcome to download it from there and try it out yourself and feel free to improve on the workflow as well. Um, so thanks for watching today. Um, I make uh, two videos every week and hope to do so for a long time. So if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, take care, bye. Thank <laughs> you.